I just want to continue to talk about Samson here and let you know it's really symbolic for these sons of God of Genesis 6. As we talked about the real society, the connection to Madame Blavatsky, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but you should be able to connect that with the occultic significance of Hitler, World War II, the history that surrounds the real society. And then, of course, you're going to find out that all that's connected in their belief in something that they refer to as the coming race. And, of course, this coming race is no surprise. It's a Aryan master race that lives underneath the ground. In other words, it's this very same underworld that the Sumerians talked about, the very same underworld that the Mayans talked about, the very same underworld that the Egyptians talked about. It's the underworld, which is under what? Us. So we want to talk about the hair that Samson had and show you that, hey, there's a clear line of sight here. Samson is a part of this demigod faction of the descendants of the sons of God of Genesis 6. He's got great strength, right? We already saw in Judges chapter 14 that he wants to destroy what? The young lion that's roaring against him in the vineyards. Well, those are the other sons of God that have not fallen. So if there were fallen sons of God, guess what? There were unfallen sons of God because the Bible declares only a third of the angels rebelled. So this goes into both factions. It goes it enters into the factions of all the other beings. So it wasn't a complete total fall of all beings, nor was it a complete total fall of all the sons of God in Genesis 6. So that's a big part of the story that a lot of people are missing in the Hebrew Bible is that, yeah, there is an existential civilization of sons of God that are unfallen, that are a high race, that do represent the unseen father. They do represent the coming of Jesus Christ. And this is where we get some of these earlier legends from about this coming son of God that's to be manifested on our earth that even the ancient Egyptians begin to describe or the ancient Sumerians begin to describe. And we begin to have all of these legends that now the New Agers want to say, oh, well, your Jesus story is from a much older time because it was told before Jesus was ever to come about and it was in all these other cultures. Well, guess what? These other cultures are borrowing this information from the very same information that was originally offered by the sons of God before they rebelled. They were telling of the coming son of God as he would be manifested in the flesh. They were sent here to prepare the garden. They were sent here to prepare the way, just as like Melchizedek was sent to prepare the way in the days of Abraham, which is another type of son of God that was sent to this world. Many Many types of sons of God exist, but there is only one true son of God that is existential with the trinity of all that is, and that is Jesus Christ. He is the real manifestation of the unseen father himself. He's not just an average son of God. As I said, he's the son of God. And it just so happens that our planet was chosen for the full manifestation of the unseen father. And we should be proud of that because not all other planets get that manifestation. As you already know that there are planetary princes that are being sent to planets as we see the devil is depicted as a planetary prince. He's depicted as a prince of this planet, i.e. planetary prince. He is a fallen prince, which means at one time he was unfallen and he was a spiritual prince over this world, a morning star, i.e. a high son of God. So there are other high sons of God, as you see, and that's going to be quoted in connection to the most highs, if you will, that rule in the north. And that's where Lucifer wanted to ascend his throne. He wanted to ascend his throne in the north, in the mount, above the most highs. You're going to find out that the most highs are not God himself. The most highs are plural, and I can show you the scriptures here that will prove that. And I can show you the scriptures in the Hebrew Bible that will prove that the most highs themselves have someone higher than them. And it says it right here in the scripture. So a lot of people are missing the, the important understanding that there are many high spiritual hierarchies that are involved in the government, spiritual control, or spiritual welfare of the kingdoms of men. The most highs themselves, if you look it up in the concordance, you will find out that the most highs are described as ruling in the affairs of men. That's why Lucifer wants to ascend in his mountain above the north in the kingdom of the most highs. Why? Because he needs to rule in the affairs of men. Why does he need to rule in the affairs of men? Because he can't ascend back into heaven. That's what the book of Enoch says. They can't go into heaven. That's the whole purpose of why the Antichrist has to enter into a physical form, because he's not going to be able to stay in a spiritual form. He's, he's understanding that this coming judgment is coming upon him. But the point that he's trying to make is that he's going to overcome it because he's going to say that Jesus Christ has no real power over him when the time comes and he's going to challenge him. I'll be back.